This is an animation of what you're about to see in this patient's bacterial smear. This is a white blood cell, your body's defense system. It's a neutrophil with a multi-segmented nucleus. The cytoplasm of the white blood cell appears to effervesce or boil. That characteristic distinguishes the white blood cell from the really bad actors, amoebas. In this smear, there is an army of white blood cells forming a barrier. White blood cells always work together to try to protect you, but they're helpless against the amoeba. This is a large amoeba. It is a one-celled animal and a parasite. It's often found in severe periodontal infections. It's about to give birth. This is the nucleus. The white spot is called a vacuole. The cytoplasm does not effervesce. They move by what's called a pseudopod. Or in other words, this blob bulges out in one direction or another, and it slinks that direction. This one will take a nucleus and a cytoplasm and make a whole new amoeba. This is the only video I've seen of an amoeba giving birth. Spirochetes are virulent bacteria. Every species we know causes some terrible disease of mankind. Syphilis, Lyme's disease, ehrlichiosis, or gum disease, just to name a few. They move rapidly with a wriggling motion, which makes them easy to see on the microscope. They look like snakes. They can go in either direction. And unlike most other bacteria, they can bite. They can actually penetrate mucosa, and I've seen them bite their way inside a red blood cell. They live in the cravicular fluid around teeth, and also in the bloodstream. They are a very bad bacteria to have, but fortunately, they're easy to kill. They can't even stand oxygen because they're anaerobes. Salt or baking soda will kill them as well as a whole host of antiseptics. In my practice, I use the spirochete as a barometer of the patient's home care and also my own hygiene department. After a normal cleaning, both at home and in the office, there should be no active spirochetes. In the center of the screen, there are two skin cells, and between the two large cells is a white blood cell being attacked by a mass of spirochetes. Spirochetes show group intelligence and will actually attack your immune system. They have the ability to penetrate mucosa. This is called organization. When you see organization, you know the infection has been going on undisturbed for some time. Thus, home hygiene is inadequate. It usually takes several days for them to become organized. Spirochetes show group intelligence. You do not want smart bacteria. Here they have ganged up on a white blood cell. When you take the bacterial sample from the patient, you'll see thousands of spirochetes, all biting a white blood cell. This shows organization. When they get too crowded, they'll all line up on one of the non-motile rods and begin to beat together and make a heartbeat. So they create their own circulation and pack more spirochetes into a smaller area. This smear is almost to that level. You recognize the amoeba and the white blood cell. The amoeba appears to stick a snorkel into the nucleus of the white blood cell and almost immediately the nucleus appears to dissolve and migrate through the snorkel into the body of the amoeba. The white blood cell dies, but in doing so it will release histamine, which will call millions more white blood cells to the area. More food for the amoeba. There is a large gathering of amoebas, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see one moving on the lower left and many small gliding rods and spirochetes in the background. These amoebas are surrounded by a mat of white blood cells, as is often the case. They produce tremendous amounts of inflammation. The presence of amoeba in large quantities of white blood cells makes the classification of this disease as advanced as it gets. Here is an amoeba that wraps itself around a white blood cell, then grabs onto it and drags it with him. The white blood cell is damaged by that attack and begins to expand in the middle. Effervesce less and the cytoplasm is almost entirely lost. 
In the smear also note the small gliding rods and spinning rods. They too are associated with inflammation and bone loss. The amoeba move by putting out pseudopods or false foots, then flowing in the pseudopod motion. Somehow he's grabbed onto this white blood cell and is taking it with him, perhaps for a snack later. These thin stick-like bacteria are called cytophaga or clock arms. They attach themselves at one end and spin around like the hands of a clock. This area shows an infection with large gliding rods. You can also see some spirochetes in the background. Bacteria tend to grow up in nests or colonies, and this is one with large gliding rod as the predominant organism. The segmented rods are reproducing rapidly, so you know this is a fast-growing colony. Here are some very active large gliding rods. The white spot in the center is an air bubble. These are small gliding rods with white blood cells. Here are some spirochetes, again attacking a white blood cell. This is a skin cell on its side and white blood cells. This is a biological smear of a person who is infected with spirochetes, the little snake looking bacteria. And this is a smear of a person who is effective in their oral hygiene. They have eliminated most if not all of the bacteria associated with disease.